Welcome, Alistair. Thanks for joining us on uh, your Queen's birthday. <laughs> um, uh, uh, he's online because of this uh, uh, Queen's birthday and, uh, and all the festivities. Um, uh, and uh, well, we don't have a lot of time for a large introduction, so Alistair, go ahead. No problem. Yep. Thank you, everyone. Hello from, from Ireland. Uh, sorry, I can't be with you today. Uh, so today, I uh, I want to I want to talk about uh, fire uh, and, and open air uh, and why we need that combination. I think to create this next generation of, of healthcare systems. Uh, but first of all, I guess just to introduce myself quickly. Uh, my name is is Alistair Allen, uh, and I'm the CTO at, at Better, uh, and based out of out of Ireland. Uh, so looking forward to, to, to speaking today. What, what I'm going to talk about is largely a reflection based on my own experiences, really, uh, just to give some reflections. Uh, I've been working with fire and open air now for a few years, uh, and probably about six, seven years ago, did a lot of work with fire uh, by itself uh, and experienced some challenges uh, and most recently have been working on, on bringing fire and, and open air together. So it, it's really a reflection of, of some of my observations over, over the last few years. And, uh, you know, I've published uh, a lot of the detail there. You're welcome to read to, to get some of the, the background of, of that journey. But before we get into the, the, the really this, I guess, the subject matter and, and really getting on to talking about these standards, I think uh, just to take a, a short step back, and th this is a, a picture I took at, at the High Med Symposium last year, and I think this quote from, from Patrick summed it up really well for me. Uh, as a clinician, I don't care about standards un unless they solve my problem. And, and I think too often, I think sometimes we, we jump right in and start talking about standards before actually, you know, actually figuring out what, what is the problem we're trying to solve and, and what's the use case, uh, who are the users. Uh, and of course, everyone's problem statement is slightly different, but but I think we're, we're there's a, there's a number of trends I think that that we uh, are are seeing, and, and certainly in the work that, that I'm doing together with with Better, uh, we're starting to, to see these trends emerge, and and ultimately I think we're we're now entering this next generation of of health and care, uh, and this this graphic from from Rachel I think summarizes it for me really really nicely i think on, on the far left we've got kind of this generation one largely paper-based a lot of uh, tactile. Alistair, um, yeah i think we have a technical problem we, because we only see your slide not your presentation not your slideshow so we only see your slides in slide mode. i think your intention was to go through your slides or not yeah okay uh it's on my screen hold on what do you see now? Oh yeah, now it's working. Yeah. Now you just need to put on your camera and then we'll be happy. All right, sorry, I think my, something happened with my monitor. Yeah. Can you see the screens now as I... Yeah, 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 you get an applause here. Yeah, you can go on. <laughs> Great. Apologies, folks. No remote uh, session is complete without a, a technology failure. Uh, so, yeah, okay. So, you didn't see any. We'll, we'll, we'll keep going. So, uh, this is where we got to. So generation one, largely, largely paper-based, uh, a lot of tactical siloed systems. Uh, I think then moving across generation two, largely an EHR centered landscape, uh, limited sharing of, of information, uh, typically orientated around an organization or, or an institution. Uh, and I think certainly what we're seeing in, in this, the work that we're doing is aligned to this. I think we're we're now entering this kind of generation three, uh, which is orientated around the person, uh, regardless of, of where they happen to be, uh, and and that means uh, that'll be a range of care settings, a range of organisations, and and really underpinning this, uh, I, I think we'll be looking at healthcare uh, from from a regional perspective and providing uh, an open uh, data platform that's unified around around the citizen and, and allows data to flow uh, freely. So that, that, that's the, the context, I guess, of the, the problems uh, that, that, that we're seeing and, and that we're trying to solve too. And I think that starts to then influence what technology choices do we make? What healthcare standards do we select? Uh, and especially when we start to look at 
at fire and, and open air. Uh, that's a, a really important area. And, and I think then in, in terms of that, uh, where are we today? I, I think clearly we've got general industry consensus that, that standards are, are a good thing, uh, which, is, which is good. Uh, and equally, the general consensus that we should use a collection of, of standards to solve a specific set of problems. Uh, but still, I think there's, there's a lot of confusion. There are a lot of healthcare standards and it's, it's a tricky ground uh, and a tricky area to, to sort of find your way through. Uh, and I think this, this graphic, uh, again, doesn't represent all of the standards here, but, but summarizes some of, some of the core areas. Paints a, a nice picture of you know, exchange and workflow based uh, standards on the top left through to the clinical models and persistence in the top right and, and terminology. Uh, but I think it's this area in, in the middle that, that causes, I think, certainly uh, the, where I get a lot, of, a lot of questions, where we've got fire that, that sits uh, with uh, overlapping exchange and workflow and, and, the, and clinical models on, on the right. And it's without doubt the, the question that I get asked the most, like if, if fire can be used for both of these things, why do I need open air? Why do I need another thing to manage uh, if, if I can select one thing that, that does the job? And, and I think it's a really valid question. Uh, and, and, uh, and of course, I think uh, the unfortunate answer is it's, it's a complex area. And, and to quote another uh, famous inventor of another open platform, I think it depends is almost always the right answer when, when looking at any big questions like this. Uh, and, I, and I think back to Patrick's kind of quote at the start, for me, it depends on, on your use case and, and what you're trying to do. I'm going to come back to this, this diagram here, here later, but just to introduce sort of the concepts here so to bear in mind as we go through the next couple of slides. I think the two key uh, sort of areas that I think it depends on are the complexity of your use case and, and in turn, uh, the complexity of, of the data models uh, that, that you'll be working with. And then the, the use and reuse of that data and how you intend to share that data uh, and, and, and the breadth, uh, I think, has a big impact on, on the choices that, you, that you'll that you make. Before, before we just jump into that, just I, th I think we can skip past this pretty quickly. I think it's been covered maybe by, by some of the, the previous talks. Uh, but, you know, open air ultimately has originally been optimized and designed for, for this maximal data set model uh, and storage of data in a vendor neutral format. And, and FIRE very openly was designed to exchange information uh, and focus on a, on a sort of smaller common core that gets extended uh, for, for each use case. Uh, and, and I started sort of thinking about this. My next slide, I think Eric's gone and, and uh, made my, my slide kind of legacy already before I even had a chance to, to present it with a much better uh, way to, to represent this using circles. Uh, but I, I kind of think of this in my mind as, as sort of inverted triangles. And, and really, the, the way I think about it is aligned to the sort of the focus of, of each standard. It's certainly not to say that the narrow end of, of either triangle is, is necessarily a weakness. But ultimately, open air uh, with its foundational reference model that will support a standardized data uh, running anywhere in the world uh, on that uh, reference model, building up with uh, a, a maximal data model idea that gets constrained down through templates for a use case. It, it's kind of the opposite way around with, with FIRE, where you, you have a smaller set of resources that you have to profile and extend to, to create the use case scenario. And then that leads up to, to uh, how we uh, use that to exchange information through APIs and, and messages. But, but each of these... Uh, sort of design philosophies and, and, and originating uh, foundations, I think leads us to uh, a number of trade-offs. And I think uh, in, the, in this book, the authors kind of present the first law of, of software architecture as everything is a trade-off. And, and I think that applies to fire. It applies to open air. And it, it applies to anything, cloud, AI, whatever your choice may be. Uh, so, the, the next five slides are, are five trade-offs uh, that, in my experience, I've, I've sort of observed when using FIRE for persistence. Uh, so this is not necessarily to, to pick on FIRE or criticize FIRE, but it's very 
direct sort of analysis based on that question that, that, that we're, we're trying to answer. Uh, and of course, there'll be trade-offs like Ian has mentioned with, with open air as well. But the first, the first trade-off I want to talk about is, is really a, a, around the, the approach to, to, to resources and the maturity uh, therein. And, and I think, you know, on, on the HL7 website, they're, they're really clear about this, that, you know, future versions of FIRE may make significant changes to, to know the trial use content. Uh, and to put that into perspective, we, you know, we, we've got 145 resources today with the current published version of FIRE. Uh, 11 of these are, are normative. Uh, so, you know, again, to put that into perspective, 92% uh, are currently to, to use HL7's sort of uh, language, not, not stable or, or implementation ready. So th this is a really significant impact. If, if you do decide to, to store uh, data using the FIRE format, uh, there's going to be changes that you're going to need to, to manage. Uh, there could be small changes like the name of an attribute, uh, or it could be larger changes like the semantics of what's being modeled. But in any case, you're, you're going to need to manage that. There's going to be several uh, fire upgrades over, over the coming year, and you're going to need to put in place strategies to account for that. Uh, and anybody who has, has migrated data in the past will, will be familiar with some of the challenges uh, that exist within that. I think when I compare that to, to open air, I think it's, it's a different design model. Uh, you've got a, a, this sort of foundational reference model and the archetypes uh, built on top of that. Of course, archetypes can be versioned and changed uh, and, and templates as well, but those are all done on an individual level uh, as opposed to uh, as an entire framework. So that, that's trade-off trade number one to, to consider. Uh, trade-off trade number two then is a, as we move up the stack to this next level and, and start to look at extensions and, and profiles. Uh, and these are really a, a necessary, if sometimes uh, complicated part of FIRE. Uh, I think this is where... Uh, you take that raw normative uh, resource and, and you know extend it or apply the rules to it to align to your local needs. And I think this quote for recently from Thomas uh, in one of his recent blogs, I think, actually describes it quite nicely for me that you know HL seven in itself isn't the standard; it's it's a standards building framework, and and the result of that is this so called proliferation of, of, of profiles where lots of different people are building lots of different profiles. And, and Eric talked about this idea of, of dialects uh, emerging. And, and the problem here is that we then have many different ways to represent the same thing that are, that are being used potentially uh, to store data in, in conflicting ways. Uh, and again, you need to, to manage that as, as if you're looking to, to store uh, data natively in, in the FAR format. And again, I think this is where the design philosophy with, with open air is really important. Uh, and again, still still work to, to be done here, but more of a, a concept of, of a core set of models that get reused. Uh, and I'll give some examples of reuse in a second. Uh, but the same models get reused and then constrained for the use case, which helps to, to establish this idea of interoperability as opposed to we've got 10 different ways to represent blood pressure or body weight, uh, which is the reality of what happens today. And as you start to combine that uh, at a system wide level, uh, and, and certainly if you're storing data for a long term, uh, uh, in, in a long term way, <clears throat> that's another trade off to, to really think about. Thirdly, then, uh, this idea of, of abstraction, uh, if anyone is not familiar, basically a simplification uh, of something more complicated. Uh, unfortunately, healthcare is really complicated, uh, and sometimes we then get this concept of leaky abstraction, where some of that bubbles up. Uh, and I think Ian talked about some of this in the last talk as well. Observation being a, a great example uh, of uh, something that that can be used to to capture lots of different types of, of vital sign, and, and subsequently that gets profiled in, in lots of different ways. I think, in my experience, questionnaires. <clears throat> is, is another great example. Uh, it, it just becomes a really easy place to store data and, and technically store data. And, and people end up uh, being able to say, well, uh, yeah, I support FIRE. But actually, what, what, what data are, are, are you storing? What does it mean? 
uh, and it starts to become quite a challenge uh, over a period of time uh, if you're doing that on a, on a, on a large scale regional basis. Uh, so that, that's another thing to be really to be really careful about. And as Ian said, those normative resources that we have are, 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 are more concrete. It's some of the other ones that, that, that exist, uh, like those two I've mentioned, that, that present some of the challenge. <clears throat> if we move then up to use of the data, so if the first uh, couple were, were talking about storing and modeling the data, how do we use the data? Search is, is very similar in, in many respects. Uh, every resource has its own search uh, capability. Uh, each individual search parameter has its own maturity cycle. Uh, patient resource, for example, I think has 23 search parameters and they're all currently trial use. You need to extend uh, search in the same way you do resources. And, and similar guidance, I think, applies here uh, to, to what I mentioned for the earlier uh, examples. Uh, and, and quite quickly, uh, you can have lots of search extensions. You know, you have to manage what indexes apply and how and how to actually productionize and, and make that scalable. I think, in my experience with with Open Air, I think that the, you know, whilst AQL doesn't solve every problem, it provides a more sort of semantically orientated uh, approach to, to getting insight from the data uh, and, and using the data for an application level. Uh, and and uh, Quite, quite different to, to the approach uh, taken with FAR. And finally, if you put all that together, ultimately, in my experience, again, uh, just reflecting on, on, on the projects that I've had, we typically find an initial productivity spike where, where things actually went quite well at the start. Uh, you maybe had a smaller number of use cases. Uh, data wasn't being shared as widely. Uh, but as you try to start going through and dealing with fire upgrades and applying profiles and, and, and having some of those trade-offs come into account that I've, that I've talked about. What, what I found was productivity actually started to, to take quite a dip. Uh, and I think if, if we start to think about uh, how, how to compare that with, with open air, certainly what I find is, is almost starting to see the opposite. Uh, so and really down to the, the community that's working around the, the archetypes uh, and the content. There's, there's over 800 archetypes in, in the CKM. Uh, of course, not all are, are sort of formally published, but a large number of mature models. Uh, and, and some interesting studies now are starting to emerge, like Heather uh, Leslie's uh, study around some COVID use cases, 40 to 100% variance in, in archetype reuse. Uh, Although I think the average was was around seventy, I think in, in the projects that, that I've been involved in, we're typically looking in, in around the eighty percent uh, archetype reuse. Uh, and what this means is you're able to reuse those data models, and you're you're spending more time doing creating the templates, uh, understanding what are the user needs, and, and solving the problem, uh, as opposed to having to to really get into the detail and. and profiling and, and, and worrying at, at that lower level, uh, which helps uh, increase productivity and, and agility. So if we come back to our, our use case, then I think the, the way that I sort of think about this then is if we start to plot this on, a, on, a, on the graph that we introduced at the start, I think we've got a safe zone. And if you want to use fire inside of that safe zone, it's probably going to work okay. Uh, I think if your models are simple, uh, and, and you're not really reusing or sharing that data very far, uh, it, it's probably going to work quite well. Uh, and, you know, and, and that's okay. Uh, I think use FAR uh, if it makes sense for you in those scenarios. I think once we start to move into this kind of danger zone, this is where we need to start to be really aware. Uh, once the models become more complex, we start going outside of the normative resources and we start to share it more widely. This is where we need the IT oversight and the governance, and we need to have really explicit strategies in place to, to deal with those trade-offs. And ultimately, again, just this is my opinion, I think there is an off-limits zone. I think when you get into that sort of top right, and, and if you're aimed for this kind of North Star where, where data is for life, uh, it can be long held in a long-term, yeah, computable and easily understood format. I, I think for me, far, far is the wrong choice for, for those use cases. Uh, but again, it's, it's down to, to a use case analysis that, that, uh, that will be important for everyone's individual scenario. 
So how do I address these trade-offs then? If, if these trade-offs exist, how do I deal with it? And, and I think I've spoken in the past, uh, and, and you know, a few of the speakers this morning have already mentioned this, this, this idea of convergence. Uh, and I think this is something that, that we're seeing today that, that exists. Uh, I think that the challenge has always been, okay, that's a good idea, but how do I actually do that? Uh, I won't go through all of this, I'm, I'm, I'll publish the blog on, on Monday around this and you can read more detail. These are some of the sort of architectural patterns that, that we see in the projects that, that we run. Uh, facade uh, with a fire interface over a, an open air database, message broker uh, patterns, uh, synchronization uh, between different uh, repositories, and even a sharded model where some uh, Data gets stored in FHIR, and, 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 and you know we do this in better. Actually, we store it, uh, patient demographics in FHIR, uh, but we store all the clinical data in, in open air. But the, the, the problem, even beyond that point, has always been how do I actually do this in practice? It, it quite often requires uh, uh, you know, a proprietary integration engine uh, or you know, hard coded software development. The good news is we're, we're hoping to change that. In, in, Oh. Can you wrap it up? We have about one minute. Sorry, uh, you already also asked to do this presentation. Is that okay? Sorry, I can't hear you. Oh, I said we have about one minute. Yeah, yeah, one I'm just minute. finishing up. Yeah, yeah, one minute's fine, yeah. So, yeah, uh, uh, yeah so we're in, in, at HIMSS in, in two weeks. We're going to launch uh, a new product. Uh, it'll allow Fire and, and Open Air to, 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 uh, to be combined in an open uh, shareable community-based approach uh, that'll work with any open air and any fire repository. Uh, uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, and really the last point is how, how, do, how do we get there? Uh, uh, only a minute left. All I want to say here is sometimes it can be daunting. Uh, sometimes it can feel like a huge journey. I think the idea is how, how do we actually start small and, and iteratively move in the right direction? Uh, and what we're seeing, uh, and, and probably the two projects that, that I'm involved in at the minute across London, uh, the Christie's and Ian has also mentioned the project in Suffolk. They've started with one use case. Christie's have started with, with proms, uh, and uh, London have started with end of life care planning. And they solve a problem, they deliver value early, and then they move on. Uh, and I think we, we're now starting to see patterns about how to do that, uh, which I think is a fantastic approach to, to adopting this kind of next generation architecture. So in closing, I think uh, I'll close the same way. I think I, I delivered a similar talk about three years ago, I think, uh, combine fire and, and open air uh, to help create open and, and interoperable e ecosystems uh, that allow data to be held in a long-lived, uh, computable and easily understood format. Thank you and apologies for the technology difficulties at the start. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Jordi's running a bit long time, so if you don't mind hanging on, we, we go to Jordi's presentation and maybe take a couple of questions after. Is that okay? I, I actually need to go off. Yeah, I have something else to go to.